My name is Donna, and two of my four children were born with Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. This is just one type of over 150 different types of primary immune deficiency diseases. This means that these two sons were born with a very weak functioning, defective immune system. This has impacted our family in ways you can't even imagine. There is treatment for primary immune deficiency diseases, known as IVIG. However, families like mine have to fight unbelievable battles and attempt to jump over nearly insurmountable hurdles just to get this necessary, life-saving treatment. And once one battle is won, or hurdle is left, there is another one waiting. My son cannot work full-time, as his disease limits him from being able to do so. As a part-time employee, he cannot receive health benefits. He was forced to go on Medicare, which brings on a completely different set of challenges, another battle. Medicare dictates the type of IVIG treatment that my son should take. They do not allow him to stay on the treatment that he had been on for 15 years that worked very well for him, in which his immunologist prescribed. My son is having a very difficult time on this new therapy, yet he has no choice in the matter. Actually, he does have one choice. Take this Medicare prescribed therapy and suffer through the sickness and side effects, or don't take this therapy and die. My daughter was just recently diagnosed. She's only 10 years old and is one of less than a dozen females in the world diagnosed with Wiscott Aldrich syndrome, as it tends to manifest only in males. Luckily, she is still young enough to have health insurance under my policy. Unluckily, insurance only pays for a fraction of the actual cost of IVIG therapy. They'll pay the most if we take her to a hospital to get her infusions. As most people know, hospitals are filled with germs. It's a terrible place for a person with little to no immune system to be forced to go. Yet if her doctor gave her the infusions in his office, he would be losing money every single time he did so. Insurance simply doesn't pay him enough to even cover the cost of the therapy, much less the supplies needed and time it takes to do an infusion. We've had to make the difficult choice to hold off treatment for our daughter. We simply cannot afford it. We are in the process of selling our home to get the money in the bank to take care of our children who were born with this disease through absolutely no fault of their own. Needless to say, we are desperate for health care reform to include provisions that fairly take care of my children. Wouldn't you want the same for yours? If your child had diabetes, wouldn't you want them to be able to receive their insulin? If your child had cancer, wouldn't you want them to be able to get their chemotherapy? Would you want your doctors to decide which insulin or which chemotherapy treatment was best, or would you be okay with a faceless bureaucracy deciding? Would you want your child who was born with a disease be denied any treatment for that disease because it's considered a pre-existing condition? These are some of the challenges users of IVIG face every day. And it's not only my children. There are approximately 250,000 people diagnosed in this country with a primary immune deficiency disease. Just because it's rare does not mean it's not important. Every American deserves a chance, and any health care legislation that services should consider every American.